Hello, welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the procedural texturing that you're seeing on these two shells here. So let's dig in. Okay, so I've got my scene set up here. Let me switch back to the layout so you can see better. Um, basically, I've just got two shells that I've modeled. Um, if you want to see a tutorial on that, let me know, but I'm not going to be showing that in this video. And then I've got um, my spotlight up here, uh, fake caustics. That's set up in the way that I shared with my underwater lighting um, technique video. Um, I'll try and leave a link to that either in the description or above the video. And then just the regular lighting setup that I have in pretty much most of my videos recently. So you can always just um, try and replicate that. Uh, or if you want a specific tutorial, just let me know. I have covered it a couple of times in previous videos. Um, so do have a look back through the playlist if you'd like to know that. Anyway, this was about doing the shading, the procedural material for the shell itself. So I'm in the shading tab. I've got viewport shading en enabled and I'm using the cycles render engine and I've already got a principled BSDF um, attached to that. So we've got a couple of changes we want to make here. First up, we are going to add some subsurface, but only very minimal, so 0.1. And you can already see what difference that made. It's basically the light um, sort of going just below the surface and then bouncing back out. Um, for that subsurface color, we're just going to leave it as the default. I'm going to increase the metallic to 0.125. So there's some reflection, but not a lot. Specular we'll leave as it is. Roughness we're going to drop to 0.125. That gives us even more shine, so it's quite a, a refined shell. We're actually going to um, create some texture soon, so that's going to be probably destroyed. Um, I'm going to leave these two as they are, the anisotropics and the rotation of that, but I might come back to them. So let's keep an eye on that. Sheen tint we'll leave as it is. Clear coat we're going to increase to 0.75. Again, that's adding more glossiness to it. Um, and I think we'll leave everything else there as it is for now. So let's get some patterning going on with a wave texture. So Shift A, press S on your keyboard and then search for wave texture. We are going to plug that in to the base color. And you can already see the patterns there. I'm going to press Control T on my keyboard to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate. If you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you may have to add these manually. And I'm going to take the object output from the texture coordinate into the vector input on the mapping node. It does make a difference as you can see. On the wave texture, we're going to use the rings value and change the wave profile to triangle. Scale, we're going to de decrease to one. Distortion, six and a half or 6.5. Detail, 15. Detail scale, four. And detail roughness, 0.25 and we'll leave the phase offset as it is, which is zero. So we've got a nice cool pattern going on here already, but I'm going to add another wave texture. Again, using the vector output from the mapping node. And I'm going to mix that with this via a mix RGB. You can add that in two ways. You can search for it, so mix RGB, or again, if you've got no Drangular add-on enabled, press Control Shift on your keyboard, right click on this, and then drag that connector up. And then you have your mix shader added. I'm gonna increase the value here to 0 0.64. And I'm going to change this to rings. Scale of 1, distortion 6.5, detail 15, detail scale 50, that's 50, and detail roughness 0.25. So now if I zoom in a bit, 
you can see it's got this kind of cool mottled texture effect going on. Now I do want to add some color to that, but I'm going to do that in a second. First, I want to add some bump to it. So we can add a noise texture and a bump node. We connect the object value from the texture coordinate into the vector of the noise texture. Factor from that into the height of the bump node and then that goes into the normal slot on the principled shader. We've now got some nice texture going on. I'm going to increase the scale to 50, 50, detail to 5 and leave the other two values as they are. Strength, I'm going to decrease to 0.25 and distance to 0.1. So again, I'll just zoom in a bit and we'll wait for that to come through. And you can see it's creating all sorts of brilliant um, three-dimensional-ish textures. Now then, where are we? This mix node, I also want to plug into the clear coat roughness. Because at the moment, the clear coat is kind of a, a very clear um, overlay, but it might actually look more like a sprayed on lacquer. But this way, I can decrease the roughness in areas based on this. So based on here. Um, now then, what else did we have? Oh, yes, let's add some color. So let's add a color ramp in between the mix RGB and the principled BSDF. We'll change the color mode to HSL and the interpolation to, actually we'll keep it to near. If I just isolate this for now, we can see what's going on. I'm going to start with a light yellow so something like that so 0.125 for the hue 0.5 for the saturation and 1 for the value at this end in fact I might just pick it from here let's go for a light pinkish color actually let's put that more into the blue Let's say 0 0.75, 0 0.5, and 1. So I've got a pink and a yellow. And then if I press the plus uh, icon here, that'll chuck me a color in between. But I'm going to mess things up by changing that to a greenish color. OK, so if I go back to the principal shader, We've now got texture, reflection, and color spreading throughout that uh, texture, which I think, I hope you'll agree, is kind of cool. And believe it or not, that is actually it for this particular texture. So there's the entire node tree. And just a reminder what things are doing. So we've got the wave texture up here, which is creating this big texture. We've got this one creating the smaller texture and we're mixing those together to create this. We're then adding color to that with the color ramp and funneling that through the base color. This noise texture, which is quite uh, tiny, is creating the information that we want for the bump node and that's going into the normal and creating that 3D texture. So let's very quickly render that. I'm using 256 um, samples with denoising enabled. I found that without denoising, I was having to go well above a thousand samples to get a good render, um, which kind of really does quadruple the time that it takes to uh, render. So let's have a quick look. And there we go. So we've got some nice texture going on. It's got a very um, opal-like effect to it. It's quite a shiny thing. You could always drop the roughness if you wanted it to be rougher. 
I am using some depth of field, so we're getting some blurring going on on those back and foreground areas. But that, coupled with the lighting, I think really makes a good fantasy type um, scenario. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.